Seattle police chief telling me last night she promises a fair and thorough investigation after two of her officers shot and killed a woman on Sunday. Chief O'Toole calling the death of Charlena Lyles, a pregnant mother of four, a horrible tragedy. Police claim the officers shot Lyles after she pulled two knives on them in her apartment in Magnuson Park. Joining me this morning is Andre Taylor, his brother Shay Taylor, shot and killed by Seattle police. Uh, last year, yes. uh, helping the family through his Not This Time Foundation. Also joining me, Nakia Isabel. Uh, Charlena was your cousin. Yes. And we so appreciate you being here, particularly under these circumstances. How are you doing? How is the family doing? Uh, and Charlena's kids? I think the family's just numb. We're angry. It's hard. It's, it's still hard to process. You know, unfortunately, we didn't expect to receive a call like this on Sunday. Um, I think we're still numb. Uh, but we're just really trying to stay together and really just be there for her children right now. Uh, it's hard. It's hard. I think anytime you have to deal with a tragedy such as this, someone, she was only a year younger than me. So I remember our sleepovers and her just giving her last to us and always smiling through it all. She was a loving mother who loved her kids. And so we're just trying to stay together as a family, which is going to be really key um, in just going through this process. But it's tough. I think it's important what you note there, you know, and I know your sister had, or your cousin had some challenges um, that we've heard about in the news. I'm sure she had her good days along with her bad days, but all we've heard about in the press since Sunday is her bad days. So for you, as you look forward and try to keep her memory of those good days, how are you going to remember your cousin? I'm going to remember her smile. No matter what she was going through, she always was smiling um, and was a giver. She loved her children. She was a mother, but she just had a heart of gold. You know, no matter what she was going through, she, she never let that phase her, you know what I mean? And I think it's hard because you see her character being attacked, but we all have issues, we all have bad days, but with her, she wore it with a smile. And one of the things that she did is she loved her children and would do anything for her children, would do anything for anybody. Like growing up, I remember going to the store, we wouldn't have money and she would pay for everything, you know? So she had just a big heart. And so it's unfortunate that someone with that big of a heart has to go through something so tragic as this. Um, so it's, it's just hard, really hard. And Andre, sitting here listening to Nakia talk about her family member, it must bring up emotions for you as well a year ago going through the same thing. What's ahead for this family as they not only deal with the loss of a family member, mm -hmm. but they deal with it in such a public way and under such a microscope uh, as a police shooting? First of all, let me just say that when Charlena Lyles uh, is talked about many times she's talked about as this woman or this victim. So we like to say say her name, you know, uh, because she was a person, she was a mother, and her name is very important. Charlena Lyles, let me just say it one more time. So Charlena Lyles is what brought us together, and I know the process is a painful one. And let me just push back on something also. Um, when one says that she had her challenges. I don't know a human being on the pond, the face of the earth, that didn't have them. So that's not an exotic situation. It's not even something that's supposed to, should be said as if her challenges are somehow different from everybody in the world's challenges. Everybody's had them, I've had them, and probably in a month or two gonna have some more. Certainly so, her challenges did bubble up in a confrontational way with police. I, I would, I, I'm not, I, we're not sure if yeah. that's what happened. You know, that's an assumption, so we don't know. If there's an investigation that's going to go forth, we're going to have the legal team of the family present, and I'm sure the uh, law enforcement will present what they present, but we don't know if that happened the way you know, you, you're stating that. So. Yeah, she did have you know, interactions with police. We okay. knew that for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a, an important reason to have you sitting here today, both of you, um, but particularly you, Nakia, is that I spoke to the chief of police uh, yesterday at length. We had a conversation about where things go from here, and I think it's important to get your reaction and the family's reaction to some things that she had to say. So first, I just want to play a short clip uh, for you of that conversation. Your message to her family and her kids that are left behind. I hope to meet them personally, um, to extend my very sincere condolences, and to establish a relationship so that we can work through this together. So the chief saying she'd like to meet with the family personally. She also pledged a fair investigation, a thorough investigation, said she hopes to keep the family in the loop every step of the way. Do you think the family would be willing to meet with the, the chief of police at this point? That's a family decision. I think the family's just very angry and hurt right now. 
you know, just considering the circumstances. It's something that I can't decide for us, but I believe we're a unit and that's how we're trying to move forward. It's just, it's hard when you look at the situation. A, a woman who was Charlene Allows, less than 100 pounds, and there were two grown men, trained officers, that would shoot her. Why? So I think there's a lot of questions and anger there, but of course they're gonna have to be a part of the process and we're not coming in with animosity, but for sure anger and grief. It, it's hard, you know what I mean? So of course there's gonna have to be some type of partnership, but again, we're coming in as a unit and we definitely want justice for sure. And we know we can't do it alone. So there is gonna have to be some type of partnership, but that's as a unit we come and we try to figure this thing out. But right now it's just so hard to think about, honestly, you know, again, two trained community members that are supposed to be helping serve us and she answers the door and her life is taken. We have, we don't have a lot of footage, not a lot of audio. We're really unclear what's going on. So a lot of emotion and, and it's hard, right? So of course there's gonna be that process, but again, we're gonna decide that as a family unit and figure out how we move forward in that process for sure. Can I ask you both how much you trust the process? You've been through it. Uh, the shooting of your brother was ruled justified by the police mm -hmm. department. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a long process. Can I ask you independently how much you both trust the process that SPD has in place to look into a fatal police shooting? Well, let me say this, um, when Chief O'Toole says that there's going to be a fair investigation. <clears throat> That's subjective. Um, because in 30 years, there have been investigations of incidences like this, of use of deadly force, and 215 people have died since 2004 to 2015. And in those fair investigations, not one officer was held accountable. So what we have to look forward to is a law that, 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 there's, that allows a de facto immunity in the law for police officers when they uh, use deadly force. That's, that's a problem. So I need to help walk them through this process, not getting their hopes up too high, but letting them know we can fight and we will continue the fight. You know, but, uh, and then let me say this also. I heard in the interview you had with Chief O'Toole that she said that these officers were trained in de-escalation, one for maybe a little mm -hmm. more than eight hours and one for like 40 hours. Um, whatever training they had, it probably didn't come into play in this incident because the escalation could have could have created a different outcome. So, 40 hours of training and eight hours of training is not equivalent to an officer being on the force for an extended amount of time of years. What happens if if a situation happens, people are predisposed to go back to a behavior that they're comfortable with. So, an officer needs more than eight hours of training of de-escalation. And certainly a lot of factors here, including the fact that this officer did not have a taser, we're finding out, was told mm -hmm. tase her, tase her, mm -hmm. said, I don't have a taser. I want to give you the last word, Nakia, very quickly since we're running out of time. What level of trust do you have in the Seattle Police Department to, as the chief told me last night, run a fair and thorough investigation? Uh, honestly, it's hard to trust. How, how are we supposed to trust the same people that took her life. And again, listening to the audio and the video, it's like, it's not justifiable. Another senseless death, a mother, a cousin, a daughter, a sister, a friend, gone. So, I mean, it's gonna be a process for sure that we all have to be a part of, but it really is hard to trust, you know? What standards are we using? Is it, is it equality? Is it justice? If that was what I was asked to trust, that's hard in this situation, mm -hmm. looking at the facts. All right, Andre Taylor. Um, Nakia, Isabel, we appreciate your time. Um, our hearts go out to your family. Thank we know you. regardless of the circumstances that this is a very difficult time for you and especially to be going through it in such a public way. It means a lot to us that you come here and speak to us. So thanks again Thank for you. being Thank here. Thank you. Back after this.